हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल लर्न माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल 2016 यू हैव इन द प्रीवियस क्लास यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट माइक्रोसॉफ्ट एक्सेल 2016 इन दिस चैप्टर यू कैन लर्न समथिंग मोर सो नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो वॉच द वीडियो वेरी क्लोजली एक्सेल 2016 इन द प्रीवियस क्लास यू वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड टू वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पॉपुलर स्प्रेडशीट सॉफ्टवेयर दैट इज एक्सेल 2016 It is widely used to process complicated mathematical calculations and also allows you to store, organize and analyze the data. You also learned about its basic features like how to enter data, perform calculations, save the workbook, etc. In this chapter, we will discuss the various ways to select and enter data, modify the cell contents, insert or delete cells or columns or rows using autofill and flash fill feature in MS Excel 2016. Students note the fact when you open Excel 2016 for the first time, the Excel start screen will appear. From here, you can create a new worksheet, choose a template and access your recently edited workbooks. Okay, let me now tell you about selecting cells. We often need to select a group of cells to perform various operations such as copying, moving, inserting or deleting. Selection can be made in any of the following ways. To select action, a row or column, click the row or column heading. Entire worksheet. Press control plus A or click the select all button located on the top of the first row heading. Adjacent rows or columns. Select the first row or column then hold down the shift key while you select the last row or column. Non-adjacent rows or columns. Click the row or column then hold down the control key while you select the other rows or columns for selection. Let me tell you that press control plus shift plus 7 to apply outline border around the selected cell or a range of cells. All right, now we will talk about entering number as text. If a number is entered in the format such as 01481, Excel will drop the leading zero. To preserve the leading zero, required in case of telephone area codes, roll number etc, type an apostrophe before the number like this 01481. The data is now treated as text and displayed in the same format as it has been entered. Typically, formulas will treat the entry as a zero and functions will ignore it. Students, let's take a quick view. To enter data in multiple lines in the same cell, use Alt plus Enter key combination. Let us now discuss how to enter date and time. Select the cell and type the date and time. You can separate the date elements with a slash or a hyphen or use formats such as 11 October 05. Excel recognizes and supports a variety of date formats. To display the entered date in different formats, select the cell containing the date. Click on the format drop-down button in the cells group on the home tab and select the format cells option. In the format cells dialog box choose any desired format of date by clicking on the date option in the category list on the number tab Similarly you can choose different time format by clicking on the time option in the category list Okay let us now find out how to change cell contents The characters and numbers typed in a worksheet can be seen both in a cell as well as on the formula bar Enter the contents and press either the enter key or the enter button on the formula bar to accept the entry. When you type in the new data in the cell, the two buttons cancel and enter present on the left of the formula bar become active. Cell contents can be modified in two ways. Replacing cell contents using edit mode. All right, now let us find out how to replace cell contents. You can edit the cell contents directly and replace them with a new entry. Open a new worksheet and type in the data as shown in the figure. 
Select the cell, let us say D6, whose content has to be changed. Now type 65 in that cell and press the enter key. Note that the previous value 56 is replaced with 65. Similarly, try to change the contents of other cells. Let me share some facts with you. To clear the contents of the cell, select the cell. Click on the clear button in the editing group on the home tab. Select clear contents option. You can also clear the contents of the cells by selecting the content and then pressing the delete key. Now let's find out how to use edit mode. Select the cell D6. Double click on the cell. The insertion point will blink within the cell. Note that the edit mode is indicated on the left side of the status bar. Position the pointer at the desired place and change the contents. Press the enter key. The changes will be entered in the current cell. Notice the edit mode indicator changes to ready mode. We can also edit the cell contents in the following ways. Select the cell and then click on the formula bar. Move the pointer to the position where you want to insert characters. Now make the required modifications in the formula bar. Turn on the overtype mode by double clicking the cell. When overtype mode is turned on, the cursor changes to a blinking bar and the character to the right of the blinking bar gets highlighted. Press the insert key from the keyboard. Start typing in the cell. The existing characters will get placed with the new characters you typed in. Students now know that you can change the cell contents by pressing F2 key after selecting the cell. The cursor will blink at the end of the cell content. Now let me tell you how to use the undo and redo feature. After making modifications in a cell, you may wish to cancel the changes and retrieve the previous data. To undo the last actions performed, use the undo button on the quick access toolbar. The redo command is used to quickly repeat the last actions that you have undone using undo command. To do so, click on the redo button on the quick access toolbar. Students, let us have a quick view. To repeat most commands or actions, press F4 key. Students, let me share some interesting tips with you. You can use the shortcut keys Ctrl plus Z for undo and Ctrl plus Y for redo actions. Some actions cannot be undone, such as clicking any command on the file tab menu. If the command or the action cannot be undone, the undo button changes into can't undo. Some actions, such as using a function in a cell, cannot be repeated. If the command or the action cannot be repeated, the redo button changes into can't repeat. Okay students, now we will learn how to insert cells, columns and rows. At times, while entering data, you may miss out certain entries. In such situations, you may have to insert some cells, columns or rows in the worksheet. Let us learn how it can be done. Let me first tell you how to insert blank cells. There are two ways to insert blank cells. Select the range of cells where you want to insert the blank cells. You should select the same number of cells as you want to insert in the spreadsheet. Now right click on the range and select the insert option. Or select the insert button in the cells group on the home tab. Click on the insert cells option from the drop down list. In both the cases, you will get the insert dialog box. There are four different options to choose within the dialog box as displayed in the figure. Select the desired option and click on OK. Students, can you quickly recall, a range is a group of contiguous cells, which form the shape of a rectangle. When you select a range, the selection becomes dark with a border around it. Let me now tell you how to insert a column or row. Select the column or cell to the left of which a new column is to be inserted. Here we have selected column E. 
Click on the drop down arrow of the insert button in the cells group on the home tab and choose the insert sheet columns option. Excel inserts a blank column to the left of the column E and shifts the entries of column E to column F. Students know that you can insert a row in the same way as you insert a column. Select the row or a cell above which a new row is to be inserted and choose insert sheet rows from options of insert drop down menu. Also notice that to insert a blank column or row, right click on the cell and select the insert option from the pop up menu and select the desired option from the insert dialog box. Students now let me tell you how to delete cells, columns and rows. Let me first tell you how to delete cells. Select the range of cells to be deleted. On the home tab, click on the drop down arrow of the delete button and select the delete cells option. The delete dialog box appears displaying four options. Choose appropriate option and observe the change. Students, let us take a quick view. The key combination Ctrl plus minus displays the delete dialog box to delete the selected cells. Let me now tell you how to delete columns or rows. Select the column to be deleted by clicking on its header. Click on the delete drop down menu in the cells group on the home tab and select the delete sheet columns option. Or right click on the header of the selected column and choose delete option. Students know that you can delete a row in the same way as you delete a column. That is, by clicking on the row header and choosing delete sheet rows from the options of delete drop down button. Or right click on the row header and choose the delete option. Students let me share tips with you. To insert multiple columns or rows or cells, select the same number of columns, rows or cells that you want to insert. To insert non-adjacent columns, hold down the control key while you select non-adjacent columns. Alright, now let me tell you how to change row height and column width. In Excel, we can adjust the row height and the column width of the worksheet as per the requirement. The default value for row height and column width is 15 points and 8.43 points respectively. Students, let's first tell you how to change the row height. Select the row. Click on the drop down arrow of the format button in the cells group on the home tab. Click on the row height option. The row height dialog box appears. Enter the desired value and click OK. The change will be reflected on the selected row. Students now tell you how to change the column width. Select the column. On the home tab, click on the drop down arrow of the format button. From the displayed list of options, click on column width. The column width dialog box appears. Enter the desired value and click OK. Observe the change on the selected column. Ok students, now let us find out how to copy and move data. Copying refers to duplicating data, that is, text formulae, either in the same worksheet or a different one. Moving refers to changing the position of data either in the same worksheet or in a different worksheet. The move to copy data is stored temporarily in a location in computer memory called clipboard. To move or copy data, use the cut, copy and paste commands. Let me tell you the steps involved in copying and pasting data. Select the cell or a range of cells you want to copy. Let us say B4 is to D4. Click on the copy button in the clipboard group. The dashed line will appear around the selected cells. Select the destination cell, let us say F6 and click on the paste button in the clipboard group. The text will be copied to the new location. If you want to paste the same data repeatedly, you need to click on the paste button in the different cells. Students know that to remove the border around the selected cells after you finish copying, press the escape key. Let's now talk about moving data around. 
Sometimes you find that the placement of data is not appropriate. You need not to delete and retype it. Excel allows you to move data around the worksheet. Let us learn how to use the drag and drop method. Select a cell or a range of cells. Position the mouse pointer at the edge of the selected cells. Notice that the pointer changes from a white cross symbol to a move pointer symbol plus. Drag the selected cell or a range of cells to a new destination and release the mouse button. The data will be moved to a new location. Let me give you some interesting tips. We can also move the data by using shortcut menu. Right click on the cell to open shortcut menu and select the cut command. Now select the destination cell, right click on it and choose paste option. The shortcut key to perform cut, copy and paste operations are Ctrl plus X, Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V respectively. You can also move the data by selecting the cut and paste button in the clipboard group. Let me tell you how to use autofill and flash fill feature. Excel provides two wonderful features, autofill and flash fill to enter data quickly in a worksheet instead of entering it manually. Let's first talk about autofill. The autofill is the easiest method to fill data automatically in the worksheet cells. Type January in cell B1. Position the pointer at the lower right corner of the cell. The mouse pointer changes into a black plus cross symbol. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the fill handle up to cell B5. Release the button. The months February to May would appear in the cells B2 to B5. Now let me give you a few tips. If the source cell contains text, a number, a formula, a day or a month, the autofill feature copies the data from the source cell to the destination cells. In case of numbers, type two consecutive numbers to fill the series while using the autofill feature. Now, let us talk about Flash Fill. Flash Fill introduced in Excel 2013 is a time-saving feature which identifies the data fill pattern that you use frequently in a worksheet and then fills the remaining series accordingly. Let us try it practically. Make two columns, names and initials in Excel sheet. Fill the data in names column and given in the figure. The initials column should have data that is combination of the first characters of first name and the last name. Example, RK for Ravi Kumar. Type RK in the initials column and press enter key. Click on the fill drop down arrow present on the home tab in the editing group and select the flash fill option. You can also use the shortcut key Ctrl plus E. The initials of rest of entries will be automatically added in the remaining cells of the initials column. Students know that all the above explained features like inserting and deleting cells, rows and columns, moving and copying the data, autofill and flash will work in the same manner in Excel 2030 as they work in Excel 2016. Also notice that you can minimize a workbook window to an icon by pressing Ctrl plus F9 key combination. Ctrl plus F10 maximizes or restores the selected workbook window. Okay students, let us take a read. Dear students, I hope you like the video and understand everything. Thank you for watching this video.